All right, good morning, everybody. Today's discussion, I wanted to give you my opinion of Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell Technologies. And uh, the, uh, the reason I'm addressing this is because I've had numerous people in the comments section and also by private message ask me what my opinion is of it. And um, I wasn't initially gonna comment on this, partly because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a battery specialist, and so I wanted to leave the comments to, to those that know more than I do. But again, I've had so many questions about it that I wanted to address it. Now, for those of you that don't know, I do have some background in uh, working with, with lithium battery and in manufacture of radio-controlled helicopters, and I also have a, a small side business that I uh, design and build uh, high-end electric bicycles using mostly lithium polymer batteries and uh, brushless, permanent magnet brushless DC motors. So I understand a little bit about this. And um, in fact, sort of uh, my initiation to looking into EVs many years ago was uh, a, uh, a Honda Civic CRX that was built uh, using lithium batteries and ironically, Maxwell Technology supercapacitors. It's actually, I believe, the only electric car I've yet uh, run across that used supercapacitors, and um, that was um, that car was built by an individual that uh, eventually started a business that I believe he calls the Metric Mind, where he deals with primarily very high-end EV conversions. I haven't researched him in the last few years to know if he's still around or not, but anyway, um, so main the main questions that people have asked me regarding uh, Tesla's acquisition of Maxwell Technologies is related not to their battery cells, but to their supercapacitors. So um, I'm gonna do most of my talking about the supercapacitors. Now, uh, first we need to define what is a capacitor before we can understand what is a supercapacitor. Um, a capacitor is similar to a battery in that they are both uh, storage devices. So uh, both batteries and capacitors can be charged and they store power uh, and then they discharge that power when it's called for. So you would think, oh, well, they're the same thing. No, they're very, very different. A, um, a capacitor charges quickly and discharges quickly, whereas a battery charges much more slowly and discharges more slowly. So, for instance, a capacitor could be charged in just a few milliseconds, and whereas a battery would be charged in the minutes or hours. So, uh, most batteries would charge at a, from zero to full capacity, would have a, a maximum charge rate of about one hour, and uh, batteries that can be rapid charged would be more like uh, a 15 minute recharge whereas a capacitor again can be fully charged within just a few milliseconds <clears throat> so a good analogy of the difference between a capacitor and a battery is a capacitor is sort of um, uh, similar to maybe a spring a metal spring you can stretch a spring very quickly and it can can you know respond and dump that energy very quickly so again a, a spring can accept energy rapidly and can dump its energy very rapidly whereas a battery is more like a reservoir of, of fluid say uh, you know a bucket or a bathtub of water uh, it there's a lot of energy capacity there a lot of potential energy there but it takes a lot of of time to fill up that that uh, reservoir and then also to dump the water out of that reservoir you can try to fill it rapidly and uh, empty it rapidly but you create a lot of turbulence and it just there's restrictions there so a uh, again that's you know capacitors like a spring a battery is more like a, a fluid reservoir so uh, now with a with a capacitor you can charge a capacitor slowly and discharge it slowly if you'd like, but their main strength, their, their main you know, um, ability is in rapid charging and rapid discharging. And now, so people have asked me, well, why not just use capacitors to power uh, a vehicle, whether it be one of the electric bikes I build or an electric car? 
and the primary reason is because of energy density. Energy density is how much energy you can fit into a given you know, volume, uh, let's call it a, a cubic foot uh, of, of space. So uh, there is far, far more, many, 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 many times uh, the, um, the energy density in a battery versus a capacitor. Now, supercapacitors, which is what Maxwell Technologies really became famous for, are exactly that. They are capacitors that are taken sort of to the extreme. The energy density of a supercapacitor is many times greater per its size, per cubic inch or cubic foot of space, than a standard capacitor. However, they, a supercapacitor is still uh, much less energy dense than a lithium battery. Much less, many times less. So uh, you really could not power a vehicle and have any kind of uh, you know, uh, distance of travel using just a bank of supercapacitors. Uh, but they do serve a purpose in that, again, they discharge power at a very rapid rate. And so uh, Zach and Jesse from Now You Know do a, a good video on this. And the illustration that they use, which I think is good, is the next-gen Tesla Roadster. And um, this is a point that I brought up in a previous video as well, that the next-gen Tesla Roadster has a roughly 200 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, there's some disagreement, is it 200 or 250 kilowatt hours, but it's 200 or more kilowatt hours of energy. And it's automatically assumed that it has a battery that size so that it can go the 620 mile traveling range that Tesla says it will go. Well, that's not really the case. It is true that with that much storage, uh, battery storage on board, that 620 miles of range is definitely doable. But it's not true that Tesla put a large battery in that car for a long range. No, they put a lot of, of battery in that car to get the discharge power needed to give it the roughly 1500 horsepower required to push a car of that weight to 60 miles an hour in 1.9 seconds. So that much power requires a lot of battery. Now batteries have what's called a C rating. C means capacity. So a 1C battery means that the battery can discharge at a rate to draw it from 100% state of charge to zero in one hour. That is called 1C. So if you have a battery that is 10 C, it will discharge its full capacity if asked to. It could discharge its full capacity in one tenth of an hour or six minutes. So if you have a one kilowatt hour battery that is one C, that means it will discharge one kilowatt for one hour, hence the one kilowatt hour designation. If that battery were rated at 10 C, that same one kilowatt hour battery could dump 10 kilowatts of energy, but for only six minutes, for one tenth of an hour. Now, armed with that information, Tesla batteries are happiest uh, being drawn no more from their, their storage of 5C. <clears throat> so Tesla batteries want to discharge at no greater than a 5C rate. Well, so if you do the math, 1500 horsepower at 5C rate, you're looking at a couple hundred kilowatt hour battery in order to give you the 1500 horsepower required to accelerate the car in that 1500 horsepower, zero to 60 in 1.9 seconds. You, at 5C, you need roughly 200 kilowatt hours. Now, what would be great would be to have uh, a bank of supercapacitors on board, and Zach and Jesse in their uh, video mentioned that that one kilowatt hour of, of supercapacitors should be enough to do this. Uh, and that is uh, to have one kilowatt hour of battery, uh, or excuse me, one kilowatt hour of supercapacitors on board wired parallel with the battery. So when you mash the accelerator, the supercapacitors can dump all of that current to accelerate the car very rapidly without having to discharge the battery so hard. So rather than needing a 200 kilowatt hour battery in a 600 plus mile range, 
you could use a 100 kilowatt hour battery that would still give you a very generous 300 mile driving range you would save probably a thousand pounds of weight and you would have this bank of supercapacitors on board and the way that would work is you would have this let's just call it one kilowatt hour of supercapacitors on board wired in parallel with the battery so you mash the accelerator the supercapacitors dump their power within that couple seconds to accelerate the car you let off the accelerator and the main battery pack can recharge those supercapacitors let's say over a 10 second span which is 5c uh, discharge capacity for the for the um, for the battery pack so it'll discharge over a 10 second span uh, into the supercapacitors to charge them back up so you can accelerate for two seconds let off for say 10 seconds accelerate for two seconds let off for 10 seconds and the supercapacitors would see the peak of current and then the charge peak of current and then the charge whereas your your normal battery what's called the traction battery in the car uh, would see a continual discharge of roughly 5C to keep that bank of supercapacitors charged while you're accelerating and decelerating. So um, that would be the strength of supercapacitors. Now, uh, <clears throat> supercapacitors do cost a bit. They take up space in the car, so maybe you would forego having a frunk uh, in exchange for having a bank of supercapacitors in the nose of the car, but I do think that it would be a very good addition to the car and even here's another thing to throw out at you uh, voltage sag so whenever you draw current from a battery the voltage sags so let's say you have a 400 volt battery and you draw a bunch of current a thousand amps or whatever from it that 400 volt battery may sag down to 360 or 380 volts under load and then when you stop loading it it'll go back up to full voltage so that that sag is due to internal resistance in the battery. Now if you supplement the battery with a bank of supercapacitors, now those supercapacitors can discharge with little or no voltage sag. So now under acceleration instead of losing let's call it 5% of your voltage going from 400 volts to 380 volts, you're now losing 5% of your power just in voltage sag. Well, the supercapacitors can keep that voltage more stable up right up at or very, very near that 400 volt battery voltage. So you will actually feel stronger acceleration as you're pulled back into the seat with a bank of supercapacitors than you would otherwise have by just discharging the battery pack itself. So there's that's very, very good. Uh, that would be very good, especially for a super high performance electric car. Now, um, the second thing that Maxwell Technologies brings to the table is a, a dry cell uh, battery technology uh, or battery chemistry. Right now, nearly all batteries uh, that are out there are um, liquid or gel uh, type batteries, which means that there is a fluid electrolyte between the cathode and the anode. And that fluid electrolyte is usually a fluid impregnated sponge or, or um, a membrane of some sort, but it is still a liquid. And the, uh, the battery itself is more stable if you can use a solid electrolyte. And Maxwell Technologies does have uh, solid uh, electrolyte, dry electrolyte cells uh, that don't use fluid. They are more energy dense and potentially more cost effective. So I believe that Tesla is, well, I believe uh, Elon Musk early on had mentioned that he wants to corner the world's energy market. And that's where the, that's where the, the real business is for Musk. He's pushing for the, the world's energy market. And so it, it really stands to reason that Tesla would purchase uh, energy companies, especially if they have some sort of proprietary technology. So I believe it was wise for Tesla to, to acquire Maxwell Technologies because they have supercapacitors, which would be attractive in an electric vehicle uh, application to not to replace batteries, but to supplement them. And they've got dry battery cell technology. And not only is it dry cell, but here's the thing. If Tesla can manufacture their own batteries under their own, their own um, company, their own corporate structure, then there is no reason to, to have a contract with Panasonic or with any of these companies. Right now it's Panasonic, 
but uh, LG is another world uh, world leader in batteries, and it would just be better for Tesla to to be able to produce their own batteries in house without any ties, without being in bed with any other company. So I believe it was wise in that respect as well. And on top of that, Tesla has not um, jeopardized their cash position in this acquisition because it was a, it was a stock options um, deal, uh, trading stock for stock. Now uh, I also need to be clear on this that uh, that that purchase has not gone through yet. So the boards of both companies still need to okay the, the purchase. But assuming it goes through, it's not going to affect Tesla's financial position. And it is all good as far as technology goes. It's all good news uh, for, um, uh, for Tesla as a company, for their products, and uh, by extension, uh, for those of us that, uh, that purchase products from Tesla. So anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, it's worth every penny you paid me for it. So, you know, let me know in the comments section. Am I off my rocker? Do I have a good point? Uh, what are your thoughts? So anyway, as always, give me a thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, you guys have yourselves a great day. Take it easy now. Bye-bye.